Welcome to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adults ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. How's it going? How are you guys doing? Uh, 2020 still continues. It seems like it never ends. (laughs) I hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, I've been talking to many of you through our workshops, and obviously I do a lot of coaching, so I know it's, it's been catching up with a lot of us. So I think some of us hunter types, as the year started and we had some some chaos. I think we all sometimes get stimulated by it, but I know a lot of us, including myself, are starting to go, whoa, okay, this was an intense year. So I hope you're doing okay. Um, today's episode, we are going to be talking about one of the classics for us hunter types, the all or nothing tendency, or also known as perfectionism. So why do we have it? What are the gifts? And how do we prevent it from taking over, which is really, this is the one that can shoot us in the foot so many times. We've all been through it. How do we prevent it from taking over and causing us to give up before we've even started? So that's the theme. We've danced around this one quite a bit, but I really felt like this deserves its own episode. Uh, So stay tuned for that. I just want to do a quick shout out to everyone that joined our our last workshop. Thank you so much for showing up for yourselves. Uh, It was just an amazing experience for me to connect with you guys. And also it's continuing on in the Facebook group. So I just want to give you guys a shout out. It was an honor to work with all of you. Uh, I'm really pleased to see the wins that you guys have been posting this week. Uh, And lots of people have reached out. It seems like this last year, uh, the podcast has gotten a lot more popular, which so for all those new people, thank you for joining us. For those of you who've been asking, it will be uh, in January. So we'll do our next live online workshop in January. And then after that, we'll be doing the groups. I was thinking about doing the group towards the end of this year, but I needed, we have some other projects that we wanted to focus on for you guys um, and felt like it, we needed to take some space before the holidays. So uh, next, uh, a live workshop will be in January and I'm guessing the support groups will start uh, later uh, in 2021. So we'll keep you posted if you're on the, uh, join the email list if you're not on it. Uh, and then we will also announce on the podcast. Okay. So I'd like to start this one with a quote. Uh, Because I feel like this quote really sums up this topic for us. And it's by the late, great Leonard Cohen, who I think passed away last year or two years ago. Uh, Songwriter, amazing poet, um, humanitarian, amazing human being. I have great respect for Leonard Cohen. And the quote is, and it's it's probably his most famous one, so you might not already know this one. Um, The quote is, ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. So there it is. That is that kind of gives us the terrain to work from today. 
Uh, so what is the challenge? So the challenge is when we are wired the way we're wired, part of that wiring, and I, I think this is just about universal. Sometimes there's things that are common to some hunter types and others not, but this feels pretty universal. Hunter types are notorious for all or nothing thinking. It's either it's going to be done, it's going to be I'm going to do it perfectly, or just forget it and I, and I get you get discouraged and you move on. There's no it's not it's black or white. And sometimes this pays off. So that's the deal. Like we, we do this and sometimes if we just burn on something and just are just dogged, um, sometimes it works out. And so especially if it works out, then you're like, oh, well, I just have to keep doing this. But what happens is it leads us to easily getting discouraged and abandoning our goals because we didn't do it perfectly. So that's the classic challenge. You guys know this one. You start on something and then you realize, oh, it's just not, you had a vision in your head of how it was supposed to go. And because you didn't rise to that occasion, you give up. It's just like, forget it. It's, it doesn't have the stimuli that you need to stay focused on it. It's also called perfectionism. So what's the solution to this? How do we work with this, but also not let it take over? Because there's some gifts to it. So we'll talk about that a little bit. So the general solution to this issue is, and the thing that I worked on for a number of years, especially in my early 30s, I made this my primary focus, which is take your tendency to want to master something, which is the hunter type tendency. It's like really wanting to just dig in and master something, stay folk, hyper focused on it until you get it right. Use that tendency and move it towards maintaining consistency. So consistency is the mastery, and that takes time. That's a lifelong pursuit when we're wired this way. So it's hard. It's not easy for us to stay consistent. So we have to trick ourselves. We need to have some tools in our toolkit to get ourselves to the place where we can maintain consistency, shift it up a little bit, but keep ourselves moving down the path, especially for those things that have to do with our health, and also like projects and things that we really care about. It's like finding how to work with that. And that's what we'll talk about today. So basically it's that, and it's also strengthening the muscle of getting back up again. So, and I talked a lot about, a lot about this in the workshop at the la on the last day. If you guys take the alive workshop, the last day we talk about, um, how do you create support systems and how do you maintain consistency and how do you get back up again? And so strengthening, it starts with just the awareness of strengthening the muscle of getting back up again to recognize you're going to fall. You're going to, it's going to you, inevitably, you're going to fall off whatever routine you've set for yourself. You're going to get discouraged on a project that you really care about and you're going to want to quit. That's normal. You have to know that you have to know that going into whatever it is, that that's going to be there. Just accept it. Just say this will happen and I need to have a game plan in place when it does, because it will happen. If you're wired this way, that will happen. So if you just take it aboard and go, all right, I know this tendency is there. I've got to work with it. Then you can start, then you have something to work with instead of just being in it feeling discouraged and then just having that just berating yourself for not doing it for falling it's like falling off and just not following through with the thing you cared about so you have to accept that that will be there you'll have a burst of stimulation and, and excitement and focus on a given project and it will inevitably start to fade and that's when you really need to get that muscle in place to accept that it's going to be there and you're going to work with it and when you start you start knowing that that is going to to be part of the mix. And also, we're, we're, it's part of the big picture here is seeing the perfection in imperfection. I think because so much of us use computers now, I think that has been a, a really powerful influence on our psyche. And on a computer, you can make things perfect. You can get into Photoshop and make something someone look perfect. Like everything's perfect. Everything's like cleanly polished. And so at like advertising has been, especially the last 20 or 30 years, it's just all focused on perfection and perfection sucks. <laughs> it's not real. It's not human. And it's very, um, it, that form of perfection is really not something that it's, it's something new to the human species. It's not been here for a long time. And so I think we're still integrating. How do we work with seeing like, being able to create something perfect like in on a computer 
but then have recognized that like you're a human being and you're flawed and you have all these things that may never resolve themselves. And so to go into today's, to today's discussion, kind of moving in from, you know, I was talking about the challenge, the solution, and then let's talk about it. So the talking about it starts with um, this Japanese concept called wabi-sabi. So I know a number of you are familiar with this, but for those of you who aren't, simply put, it's seeing and appreciating the perfection in imperfection. So a piece of pottery mass-produced, built by a machine, having no flaws, is typically worth far less than a handmade piece of pottery that includes all these imperfections and the, the the, the notes of a human being putting their fingerprints on it. It's like, that's much more valuable. And sometimes we need to integrate that thought into our being for us to accept ourselves when we wake up in the morning, that what makes us amazing is part of, part of that is our imperfections. When you look at a tree, this beautiful gnarled, like you see something, it's got real character. It's not perfect. It's this beautifully imperfect thing that is, but in its imperfection, it's perfect. So if, if the tree was just like perfectly straight and no knots and it was just straight as an arrow, like that is boring and it doesn't happen and nature doesn't do that. Nature is this wildly creative force. So that's in us. And I think hunter types have a bigger dose of that than I think the rest of the population. And I think when we embrace that, and I've seen this with, with people that I know that are artists, when you fully embrace it, your work goes to another level, your creativity, your self-acceptance goes to another level. So to me, this really is at the core of it. We can talk about strategies, but it's that identification with the beautiful nature of who you are and allowing that imperfection to be part of it instead of something you're trying to fix. And that's why to me and this podcast and the book and everything I talk about, I really encourage you to fully accept yourself, to just to wake up in the morning and go with all my flaws and all the things that I, I would like to do that I'm falling short on, this is still perfect. And if you can wake up with that sense of wholeness, your odds of actually doing something great and showing up and using your talents to their nth, to, to the fullness of what you have is greatly increased. Because if, if you have the inverse where you're waking up every morning and you're just constantly telling yourself where you're falling short and maybe people around you are doing that, then it's really hard to even muster the self-confidence to do anything of note, right? So we need to be able to embrace this concept, wabi-sabi, seeing the imperfection as perfect. That If you can do that, then you can wake up and go, okay, okay, maybe I, I'm not going to run like two miles today. Maybe I'll run a half a mile or a mile but I'm going to keep consistent with that practice. It's not good. like some days you're just not want you're not going to want to exercise. You're not going to want to do those things that would further your your skill set. But if you just go, okay, I can do a little bit today. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can just show up and do a little bit to keep that consistency going. Then you have greater than if you carry that out over a month, two months, a year, five years, then you see real progress. So to me, this episode is such a key one for us hunter types to really dig into, which is find like recognizing the all or nothing tendency, knowing it's there, and then flipping it over and just training yourself to see your imperfections as perfect. If you get that piece down, then like that's at the core of your programming in a sense. Like if you're reprogramming your brain to think in terms of self-acceptance, to give you more energy, to give you more self-confidence, then this practice is at the core of it. Accept your imperfections as perfect. Um, so the pursuit of perfection can be useful as an advisor. Okay, so this is the other side of it. So I don't want to knock uh, the tendency to want to make things perfect. Like that's that's what's driven like all the great artists that we all love. It's what's driven people who have made big difference in the world where they didn't they didn't they kept pushing forward. They kept expanding. They said, no, we need to go to the next level. So that's that's like another counterforce that we also need as well. So if you don't have that force in your life, then you'll just sit around all day and go, well, this is perfect. I'm just going to sit and watch TV all day. 
That's not what I'm saying. You need a balance between these two forces, the the self-acceptance and this force that comes in and says, no, let's keep going. Let's take this to another level. So to me, it's not an either or, it's a both and. But I think for, for a lot of us, we have so much of that, it's all or nothing, that we don't make any progress. And so we just have to pull that, that into balance again, so that we have enough of the part of us that's pushing us forward. And again, I, I call on, on that a lot with this podcast to encourage you guys. And at the same time, we also need that part of us that accepts that, okay, I'm not there yet. I'm not there. I'm here. This is where I'm at. And I'm going to take the next step from where I'm standing right now. So um, completing projects can be difficult for us hunter types because we set too high a goal for ourselves uh, in the beginning. And because of it, we, if, we, if we set that really high bar and we don't hit it right away, then the tendency is to stop. So the goal, once we've set it, 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 you may set this huge, massive goal, and it may be super stimulating. You may get really excited about it, but then it can easily lead us to getting discouraged because we can't maintain that highest ideal. And I've I've talked to so many hunter types where I can just see they have it in them to do these great things, but because they set these vast, big goals that they they literally keep doing it over and over and over again because it's stimulating but then they never make any progress. And so the discipline in that situation comes from scaling it down and saying, what's realistic from where I'm standing right now to the next two months? What's realistic? Let's take a step back and look at my history and say, what happened in the past? Okay, is there a way that maybe I can set a smaller goal that feels attainable and move towards that now and hit it because you've set a lower bar for yourself than having this giant, massive goal that you're never going to achieve. And again, I'm speaking from personal experience. Experience. I've been there. I've spent a lot of time wasting a lot of energy trying to get big things going and being humiliated and feeling just awful. And I know I, you guys know your stories as well. You've been through it as well. And I know for me, it's like I had to take a step back, especially in my early 30s and went, okay, this isn't working. I need to figure out another plan. And to me, this is when I got to the concept of wabi-sabi and self-acceptance and seeing that that was actually the key piece and making myself much more effective in the world. So the quote you've heard me use quite a bit on this podcast, uh, it's also in the book, is quoting the great... William Stafford, the poet, laureate of uh, Oregon, uh, worked a lot with Robert Bly. And uh, when he'd be teaching uh, poetry to his students, uh, he would tell them that he wakes up every day and writes a poem. He says, I'm a poet. That's what uh, I, this is my job. This is what I do. Therefore, I show up and I do it. And the students were shocked. They were like, how are you? It takes us months sometimes to write a poem. And his response was, lower your standards. And that's it. And, and he's proof. Like if you look at his body of work, it's amazing. But he created a lot of stuff that wasn't that good. There's a lot of stuff that was like, eh. but he just kept doing it. He accepted whatever came that day. And he said, this is what's perfect today. And then as he compiled those together, he whittled through the things that weren't great. And then the good stuff, it's like if you just keep doing it, you good stuff comes out. And I can say that as a musician and, so, and as a songwriter um, and other pursuits that I've, I've gone through. It's like if you just do it every day, you get better at it. But if you feel like you have to write a masterpiece every day, it's just, that's awful. That's an awful way to live. And it just sucks the joy out of the experience too. So focus on consistency versus perfection. I think that's really the highlight here. If you focus on consistency versus perfection and recognize that's going to be difficult when we're wired this way, consistency is the, that farmer type tendency that we have a struggle with, but we are capable of doing it. We just have to find our own way into it. And it starts with reworking our these thought patterns in our head. So much of it is seeing perfection in the imperfection. If you discipline yourself to do that, you'll start to accept yourself as well. That's why I encourage people to get out in nature. Don't just like when you, when we're just in man-made objects in the man-made world, everything is like perfect squared corners and 
and perfect 90 degree angles that doesn't happen in nature nature is this like beautiful gnarled like constantly evolving changing beautiful system that when we look at it we can then it, it changes the way we look at ourselves that's been my experience the, the more i spend time in nature the more i train my i basically get back to my original programming which is the to accept myself as part of this whole creation. Not to get too metaphysical, but I mean, that's the truth. We're part, we've evolved out of this beautiful creation. We're not separate from it, clearly. Um, so trusting that if you focus on consistency versus perf- perfection, that mastery will start to come as a result of that and not as, it's not an either or. And as I stated before, you, we do need to have that force that lifts us up that says, no, 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 you can do a little better. And especially once you get going and you get a little little movement going, that's when that that's a really helpful force because it can come in and say, no, 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 like let's let's make this even a little better. Let's let's take it another notch. That's when it's really helpful. So it's helpful when you've already got some energy moving, but it's terrible when you're when you're just getting started. Um, So the example is if you're wanting to exercise every day, make your routines manageable. Avoid making them too difficult. So basically, like like I was stating before, if you can just say, okay, today the goal is to exercise. I'm going to exercise, even if it's three minutes and I just get outside. Maybe the goal is I just get my shoes on and walk down the street. So if you do that, the odds are you will get your shoes on, get out, and then you might actually have a normal workout. It's just getting over that hump of, I don't really want to do this. I'm tired. And three minutes, what's three minutes going to do? If you can just get past that and just remind yourself, consistency is mastery. When you get into that mindset, then it becomes easier. And then what I can state is over time, that tendency really starts to bear fruit because you're doing in your exercise routine you start to do it with your planning and then you start to do it with the things that you create where you you don't put such a high heavy expectation on whatever it is that you're making or creating i know there's a lot of creatives in our audience that you're you feel confident in sharing it and then you find out oh hey wait a minute this is actually better than i thought and a lot of the time we're our worst critics And we also need to be able to have the ability to put things out in their imperfect form so we can get feedback. And I would say most of the time as I've been working with this, I find I'm usually really surprised at how good the feedback is compared to what was happening in my head and my judgment of it. So going back to health, as always, exercise, good nutrition, go a long ways in giving us more strength to overcome these kinds of negative tendencies. So if this is resonating with you and you're saying, yes, this is definitely me, this is my challenge, then the proof will be in as you shift your your thinking on your all or nothing tendencies and you start to have more self-acceptance, more understanding that you're not going to always show up at the way at the level you want to, and that's okay. If you can see that, what you'll see as if that transforms in your thought process, you'll become more productive. You'll find yourself being more satisfied with the things that you create. You'll see that you're putting things out more in the world. And I know I'm focusing a little bit more on the creative types today, but for me, this is where it came from. And it it came from me feeling so frustrated in not seeing my work going into the world or supporting other people. And I really had to just take in that process of, okay, I just need to show up. I need to just keep showing up every day. And that's what's perfect. Another key tip in overcoming this all or nothing tendency is working with other people, collaboration, calling in support. So if you're really struggling with putting out a project that you've been working on for a long time, find someone else that's in the same boat, that's got their own project that you guys can support each other. Or just bring in collaborators. You know, don't let it die. Don't let the thing that you care about die just because you don't have the willpower in the moment to make it happen. That's fine. It's hard. It's hard to take a project into the world on your own. That's one of the hardest things there is. So if that's you, then call in support. Find the support you need. Uh, whether it's another collaborator or just someone else who's struggling the same way you are and you guys say, well, let's get together once a week on Zoom, given, you know, with COVID and everything, 
and let's just encourage each other. We'll talk for a little bit. We'll just work independently of each other for an hour. We just stand, we just hold each other accountable. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. We'll just leave the, the Zoom on. And if that's what you need right now, make that happen. Don't wait. Just like accept that right now you're having a hard time with your willpower to make this thing happen and you need to call in some support. And again, think wabi-sabi. Accept your imperfections. See them as soulful and beautiful. And most importantly, just keep going. Okay, so there's my sermon for Sunday. (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed that. I get really fired up about this because I just see how important it is to hear this on a regular basis when you're wired this way. So I hope you all are doing well, and I hope to get some more podcasts up here in the next few weeks. So um, until next time, be well. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about the book, The Drummer in the Great Mountain, visit drummerinthegreatmountain.com. To join us on social media, click the links at the top of the homepage. Help us spread the word. We're a small press and reviews really help. If you've been enjoying the podcast or the book, consider writing a review on iTunes, Amazon, Goodreads, or your podcast app. If you're new to the podcast and want to quickly get up to speed on the concepts we discuss, check out our free five-day mini course. Visit drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash mini course. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover on future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at info at drummerinthegreatmountain.com.